Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Bibbity Bobbity Books. My name is Ellie and today I need your help. So with May just around the corner, I've been thinking about what I want to read next month and trying to put together a bit of a TBR, but I'm feeling really indecisive. And so I thought it'd be fun to make a video where I chat you through a bunch of books that I'm thinking of potentially picking up and asking for your advice on what you think that I should read. So yeah, if you could let me know down below in the comment section which books you would like me to pick up, which books you think that I would enjoy, that would be so, so helpful. So yeah, without further ado, I'm just gonna jump straight in and start chatting through some options for my May TBR. So the first book that I'm thinking of potentially reading in May is this absolute tome, which is The First Binding by R.R. Verdi. This is a huge fantasy book, so um, yeah, I don't know if I'd be setting myself up for a bit of a challenge with this book, but I'm just really intrigued by this one. The cover is absolutely stunning and it has been calling to me and it's been sitting on my shelf for a little while, so I feel like I need to get to this at some point. So this is a epic adult fantasy, the first book in a new series series and it's been likened to Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss which is one of my favourite fantasy books so I picked this one up on that premise alone because from what I've heard this has a very similar writing style so in this book I believe it is all first person and it's a retrospective narrative so our main character of Ari in this story is the storyteller and he is presenting us with his story um, and it lists on the back some of his achievements so it says I buried the village of Amper under a mountain of ice and snow, then I killed their god. I've stolen old magics and been cursed for it. I started a war with those that walked before mankind and lost the princess I loved and wanted to save. I've called lightning and bound fire. I am legend and I am a monster. My name is Ari and this is the story of how I let loose the first evil. So from that I get the impression that Ari might be a little bit of an unreliable narrator. He's obviously this famed storyteller and I feel like he's going to present himself as this hero type figure and you know I just thought this one sounded really interesting and really fun. So yeah that's the first book that I may pick up. Let me know if you want me to read this one. Okay, so the next option that I have for you is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the first of Brandon Sanderson's secret projects that are being released throughout this year. And it's set in his Cosmia, which is his fantasy world that he's created and set a lot of his books within. And from what I've heard about this one, apparently it reads quite different to some of his other Cosmia books. Apparently this one is much more whimsical and reads more like a fairy tale type story, which sounds right up my street. And I've also heard that Brandon Sanderson drew a lot of inspiration for this story from The Princess Bride, which is one of my favorite movies. So as soon as I heard that, I knew that I absolutely had to get my hands on this book. And I'm very, very excited to give it a go. I've heard some fantastic reviews so far. The the only thing that's holding me back a little bit from picking this one up straight away is that I don't want to ruin any of the Cosmia books. So I haven't read all of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmia books. There's a lot to get through and while I've heard a lot of people saying that you can go into this one without having to have read all the other books. Some other people have said that it's good to finish the Miss Mold trilogy before you go into this one because there might be some mild spoilers and I've only read the first two books in the Miss Mold trilogy so I don't know whether to read that first or whether it's fine to go into this one. If you know, if you've read this book and you have any advice for me that would be super super helpful. Do you think that I would be okay to go into this one or do you think that I should um, finish up the Miss Mold series first? Um, yeah, please let me know. Okay, so next up we have something a little bit different and I thought I'd include a classic on this list because I have been trying to read more classics and trying to expand my reading taste a little bit more and um, I think this would be perfect to read this time of year. This is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So this is a, a story that's all about the healing power of nature and I just feel like it would be a perfect spring read. And yeah, I really enjoyed the 90s movie 
The Secret Garden, which was based on this book, but I've never actually read the original story, so I'm really intrigued to pick this one up at some point. Um, I'm just a little bit intimidated because I always feel intimidated by classics for some reason. But yeah, if you've not heard of this one before, this is a story about a young orphan called Mary who used to live in India with her parents until they tragically died, and then she was forced to relocate back to England to um, move in with her uncle who becomes her guardian, and she moves into this big manor house in the Yorkshire Moors and she's kind of scared it's a big culture shock for her moving into this new place she's quite lonely and frightened and she spends a lot of time outdoors exploring the grounds and she ends up uncovering at this secret garden so she finds this locked garden this walled garden and she finds a way in and then she decides to set about restoring this garden and bringing it back to life and so it's all about the healing power of nature and it's such a beautiful story so um, yeah, I really love the movie. Hopefully I'll also enjoy the book and yeah, let me know if you think I should read this one next month. Okay, so the next option that I have is Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. So this is such a stunning book and it just screams spring to me. So I think that's why it's been calling out to me and I'm tempted to pick this one up next month. But this is the second book in an adult fantasy duology that's based on Chinese mythology. And the first book follows our main character of Xing Yin, who is the daughter of the moon goddess. And one day she accidentally flares her magic and is forced to flee her home on the moon and to run away and start a new life in the celestial empire which is this place up in the clouds that is described as eternal spring and she tries to strengthen her abilities she trains as a warrior and she has the goal of one day going back to the moon to be reunited with her mother and to free her mother from her imprisonment on the moon and I really really enjoyed the first book it was a lot of fun it was quite tropey but I didn't mind that I really enjoyed our main character of Xing Yin and I really loved loved the setting I thought it was so atmospheric so yeah I'm very excited to get back into this world and I'm tempted to pick it up in May Okay, so the next option is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sugimura. This one was translated to English by Philip Gabriel, I believe. Um, and yeah, this one's been sitting on my shelf for a little while. I feel like this was really popular, was it last year or a couple of years ago on Booktube? And everybody was ranting and raving about this one. And I bought the book and just haven't ever gotten around to actually reading it yet. But there's something about this cover that is drawing me in and making me think that it would be good to read during spring. I don't know if it's the pastel colours but yeah this sounds like a really interesting story. This is a book that I think is um, like literary fiction. I think it has light fantasy elements but it's not like a definite fantasy book if that makes sense and it's a standalone and it's about um, a group of school children who find this magical portal that takes them to this magical realm where there is this magic castle and they enjoy spending time there because it gives them a break from the realities of their life and the stresses that they are under and then one day they are tasked with this mission to find a magical key and whoever finds this magical key first will be granted a wish but that wish comes with a cost because once they've used their wish the castle will vanish along with all memories that it existed so yeah it's quite a steep cost I suppose to finding this magical key and yeah I've heard a lot of people saying that this one was surprisingly moving and I'm just very intrigued by it so yeah I'm tempted to pick this one up soon especially because I'm trying to read more translated work this year so yeah that's an option Next up we have Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Um, so this is a book that I honestly don't know a huge amount about but I've seen everybody ranting and raving about this one. This made it onto so many people's top 10 books list from last year and I'm just intrigued by the hype. I jumped on board the hype train, I bought the book and yeah I'm really really interested in this one. I think it's going to be quite different to the kinds of stories that I tend to read because this is a contemporary story and all I know is that it's inspired by by video games. I believe we follow a couple of people who play video games to escape from their realities of life. I don't know, I'm gonna read you from the blurb because I clearly don't really know what this book is about. Um, so it says on the back, this is not a romance but it is about love. Two kids meet in a hospital gaming room in 1987. One is visiting her sister, the other is recovering from a car crash. The days and months are long there. 
Their love of video games becomes a shared world of joy, escape and fierce competition. But all too soon that time is over and fades from view. When the pair spot each other eight years later in a crowded train station, they are catapulted back to that moment. The spark is immediate and together they work on what they love, making games to delight, challenge and immerse players, finding an intimacy in digital worlds that eludes them in their real lives. Their collaborations make them superstars. This is the story of the perfect worlds Sadie and Sam build. The imperfect world they live in and of everything that comes after success. Money, fame, duplicity, tragedy. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow takes us on a dazzling imaginative quest as it examines the nature of identity, creativity, disability, failure, with the redemptive possibilities in play and above all our need to connect, to be loved and to love. So yeah, this sounds like something that um, digs into a lot of really interesting themes and I feel like it's going to be one that's going to hit quite hard and yeah, I'm just very intrigued by it. So yep, that's the next option. Okay, so next up I wanted to include a young adult option and the one that I've chosen is Six Crimson Crames by Elizabeth Lim. Um, so this again is a book that was very hyped when it was first published that I just haven't gotten around to reading yet but there's just something about this cover that is screaming to me. Um, I think it's the pastel colours on there and it just looks like the perfect fun light spring read. So yeah this is a, a fantasy series, I think it's a duology and it's inspired by the fairy tale of the Six Swan Brothers. So all I know about this book is that we follow our main character who is a princess and her stepmother ends up cursing cursing her six brothers and they turn into cranes but our main character isn't able to say anything about this she's not able to um, tell anyone about this curse because with every word that passes her lips one of her brothers will die so she has to keep completely quiet and yeah that's all I really know about this one that's all I want to know because I'm just excited to give it a go for myself but what I have heard other people saying is that apparently this has a really beautiful fantasy setting and yeah I'm just really intrigued by this one so that's a fun option. Okay so next up we have a book that I've mentioned a couple of times here on my channel and that is God Killer by Hannah Kanna. Um, so this is an absolutely stunning book and I've heard lots of fantastic things about it. It's the first book in a new fantasy series and again I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet but I'm very very excited to give it a go. The cover is so so intriguing and yeah I don't know a huge amount about this one. All I know is that we follow our main character who is a god killer and they enjoy killing gods as their job until they meet a god that they can't kill who I believe is the god of white lies and that god is somehow connected to a young noble woman and their fates are kind of all intertwined I believe there's quite a lot of political stuff going on and it just sounds very intriguing honestly I don't want to know too much about this one because it's quite a short book actually which is surprising for a fantasy book especially the first book in a series so yeah I'm a little bit concerned about how short it is I hope that it can build up a um, immersive fantasy world in the short number of pages that it has but I've heard really really positive things so I am very excited about this one and also the cover is stunning and also look at these end pages I mean it's just beautiful so yeah I'm excited to maybe pick that one up okay so finally I have a little bit of a wild card as an option and I thought it'd be fun to include a creepy horror book and the one that I am drawn to is Revelator by Daryl Gregory so this is a book that has an amazing cover that I haven't heard that many people talking about and I'm surprised because it sounds so intriguing. So this is a very creepy story that's set in the backwoods of Tennessee and I'm just going to read you from the blurb. So it says, in 1933, nine-year-old Stella is left in the care of her grandmother Motti in the backwoods of Tennessee. These remote hills of the Smoky Mountains are home to dangerous secrets and soon after she arrives, Stella wanders into a dark cavern where she encounters the family's personal god, an entity known as the Ghost Daddy. Years later, after a tragic incident that caused her to flee, Stella, now a professional bootlegger, returns for Motti's funeral and to check on the mysterious 10-year-old girl named Sunny, whom Motti adopted. Sonny appears innocent enough, but she is more powerful than Stella could imagine, and she's a direct link to Stella's buried past and her family's destructive faith. 
haunting and wholly engrossing, summoning mesmerising voices and giving shape to the dark, Revelator is a southern gothic tale for the ages. How interesting does that sound? I really like the idea of there being a religious aspect to this one and it just sounds really intriguing to me and not like anything that I've picked up recently. So yeah, that's a bit of a wild card option as well. So yeah, those are all the books that I've pulled from my shelves that I am tempted to pick up next month. Please, please let me know which ones you think that I should prioritise or if you have any other recommendations for me that I haven't included here, please do let me know in the comment section down below because I'm having such a hard time choosing what to read at the moment. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like it if you did like it and subscribe if you want to see some more from me. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next time with another video. Bye.